Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Saturday, March 16th. We are smack dab in the middle of tax prep season. And for you, we have an extra treat. Another couple of episodes with the one, the only Ed Slot. If you did not get a chance to listen to Ed's first two episodes, that's from last weekend, you got to check it out. Ed is fantastic. He is a CPA. He is the guy who sort of became our conduit to understanding the power of the Roth IRA. And today on this episode, we will be talking about the Roth in depth. Here is the one, the only Ed Slot. We have the man who convinced you, Mark Talercio. Correct. About the the virtue of You're a Roth. You're welcome. Ed, Thank you, Ed. Ed Slot, <laughs> uh, Ed Slot and Company, CPA, IRAhelp.com. Welcome back. So, Mark, I'm going to let you lead this conversation about the Roth because this is well. Really- start with your your doubting Tom. You were a doubter. You were. Uh, I don't know that I was a doubter. I just don't know if I, I wasn't didn't want as to pay infor- the tax. I wasn't as informed as I am now. I didn't know all the benefits. But it, Roth, anything to do with Roth, whether it's contributing to a Roth IRA or converting in a uh, Roth IRA, it is by far the most popular question we get every Everybody day. Everybody knows the Roth IRA is the single greatest account to own. The only question is how much you're willing to pay for it. Okay. That's it. Why is it the single greatest account because to own? Because it grows tax-free. I love tax-free. You know, I do a lot, I said before, uh, I do a lot of consumer programs. And the one thing I always open up with, because we, we're sitting here talking and there's certain things that professionals, Uh, even myself, we take our own knowledge for granted. We think if we know something, everybody must know it. It's so simple, but it's not true. And I always start by telling them the difference between tax deferred and tax free. They actually think most people, their IRA money or 401k money is theirs. It is not. That is a a joint account with Uncle Sam. That's what that is. (laughs) Now, you know what a joint account- He's the beneficiary? Uncle Sam's the beneficiary? Exactly, exactly. (laughs) Oh, to put it another way, way, I always say your IRA is an IOU to the IRS. There you go. That's what your IRA is. But married people know when I say a joint account, they mean each spouse owns 50-50. A joint account with Uncle Sam doesn't work that way. We don't know Uncle Sam's share until Congress tells us what the rates will be when we come to take out our money. It could be Uncle Sam's joint account, in quotes, his share could be 60 percent uh, or maybe larger, and your share could be 40. I used to have clients coming in, and they used to be so proud there. I remember this one guy says, I did it. I have a, he brought in the statement. I've got a million dollars in my IRA. And I said, what are you looking at? That's not yours. It's just temporarily on your letterhead. You're not keeping any of that. I said, I said so there's tax still, built in but there. People still think that when they put the money away on a tax deferred, they get, the, they get their tax deduction today, mm-hmm. the money grows, they forget that when they take it out, they have to pay the tax due. And what you are actually saying goes back to your beautiful history of U.S. tax rates, that the tax rates that you would be paying in the future are unknown. Right. And today, with tax rates at close to or probably historically low levels, uh, yes. your your thesis is... No, it's not a... Th- it's a bet. Okay. That's all okay. the Roth IRA is, is a bet on future tax rates. Okay, and what's and the I bet? I believe it, the, if they're higher, you will always win that bet. Will you... Are you willing to say... In retirement, when you take it out. So you believe that tax rates today are as low as they're going to be. They're not going to get cut further. And that in the future, tax rates will likely... See you likely rise. being possible because I believe in a four-letter... You know, well, let, let me put it this way. The greatest threat to your retirement savings is a four-letter word. Which is? Well, it's not kids. Uh-huh. Everybody thinks it's that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still waiting that for that investment to pay off. Uh-huh. One of the worst investments yeah. ever. Yeah. It's not kids. It's math. M-A-T-H. As an accountant, I got to believe in math. I see these debt levels oh, just across $34 trillion with a T. Uh, I used to say that was a phone number. But now it's bigger than the phone number, even with the area code and the one. I mean, I got the whole country is living on a credit card. So I have to believe I understand Congress will keep kicking the can down the road. But at some point, the math has got to 
kick in. And when the music stops, the people with tax deferred money, and that brings me back to the first thing I tell every group, the difference between tax deferred. And I always tell them the difference between tax deferred and tax free is humongous. And it comes down to one little three letter word. That's the difference. Y-E-T. Yet. Tax deferred means you won't pay taxes on that money. Yes. Yes. And I always hesitate, and they say it. Yeah. Yet, but you will at some future balance, mm-hmm. maybe higher, at a higher rate, as opposed to tax free, which means you'll never pay taxes on that money. And that's when I tell them I have certain always rules because you'll hear people, not me, and probably not Jill on TV and everything, they're so wishy washy to give financial advice. Oh, maybe, probably, could be, should be, you never know, you know. So I always give my <laughs> always rules, things that are always true. And I always kick it off with my first always rule non negotiable, always true. Tax free is always better. You keep 100% of your money. You don't have to share it with anyone. And I'm not a good sharer. That's why I love Ross. Even when I go to a restaurant, you know, growing up, I, I like to get a, a, with my kids, we go out to eat. I like to get a shrimp cocktail. But mm. they only give you like three shrimp. And if you're I, not a sharer. No. If mm. I give good one to remember. away, if I give one away, that's a 33% loss. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him, get your own. Get your own. So All right. I'm not a sharer. You, you know, I don't want to share. I, and you mentioned uncertainty. That's the key to the Roth IRA. It's the uncertainty of what future higher tax rates, if you believe in math like I do, can do to your standard of living in retirement. So what do you think people say to that argument? They say, uh, well, in you know, retirement, I'll, I'll be in a lower tax, tax bracket. Right, so let me hit that. That never happens. OK. Why? Why? Well, look at the tax rates now. First of all, remember, if you don't convert and what we're talking about, converting, moving from an IRA to a Roth and then it grows tax free for the rest of your life, income tax free and 10 years beyond, even with the SECURE Act. Income tax free, you never have to worry about taxes ever again, and you never have to take money out unless you want to, and then it's income tax free. So if you don't convert the problem, the I call the IRA a problem, a growing, building, compounding debt. You know, it was Einstein that once said uh, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, supposedly he said yeah. that anyway. But there was another, and everybody understands that, compounding interest, I'm sure you talk about it, you have money in the bank, it compounds, blah, blah, blah. But there was another part to that quote that is not as well known. And it says, he who understands it, the the theory of compounding, he who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. Mm. What Einstein was saying is compounding works both ways. It doesn't discriminate. If you owe money, it works against you. Ask anybody who hasn't paid a credit card bill in three months. They know what compounding debt is. Mm -hmm. That's what I look at as an IRA. It's a growing, building, compounding debt. And it's growing and growing. So for the people who say, I'll be in a lower bracket bracket in retirement and I'm not converting now, that means you're letting this debt grow. And it doesn't go away. At 73, that's the new required minimum distribution RMD age, it could be if you let it grow enough, your RMDs will exceed the income you had. And I had that with somebody. I remember uh, doing a tax return for this guy years ago, and I was telling him about the Roth, and uh, he came to me all happy. His first full year retired, waiting for this you know, low tax bill. Yeah. Uh, so no income, no W-2, first full year of retirement. So I give him the return. He says, how could this be? My income's higher than my best earnings years. How could this be? I said, it's easy because you never listen to me. (laughs) I mean, I think that is the biggest appeal for obviously you eliminate the uncertainty. But the thing that's biggest for me is not being forced to take that money out. So that adds to your income. So if you built up a large IRA, it could very well be. And there are other factors I'll get to. But that the RMD alone could eclipse what your best W-2 was. Plus, you don't have the deductions you have. You don't. And when you're retired, you don't have mortgage interest. Mm -hmm. You don't have any. And you probably and and you also have a lot of investment income, probably capital gains. And you don't have kid related tax benefits. And you're also getting the standard. And a deduction. So your income is higher and deductions are lower, but people rightfully think, well, I'm, uh, unless you make a 
a ton of money, millions of dollars, and obviously if you lose that, that'll make a difference. But for most people that are building up a substantial IRA, they're just doing them, it's just creating a problem for the future. When you retire, you've got this account, this joint account with Uncle Sam. Based on tax law right now, you are required to pull out a certain amount of money every year based on your life expectancy. And that's the key, required. And that's what nobody likes about it. Uh, Most people that take these RMDs don't need the money. They take it because they have to. And then because they didn't do the Roth or they had a large IRA, they complain, oh, I have to take this money. I don't even need it. Just adds my tax bill. And, and, And the key is required. Now, I always say to people, you want your plan? or the government plan. And and sometimes people actually say to me in seminars, Ed, uh, what is the government plan? Maybe I'm interested. Yeah. I said, no, it's not. That's totally being out of control and being stuck, constrained by RMDs, forced to take the money as opposed to a Roth. And the key to the Roth, besides growing tax-free forever, you control your own tax rates. Mm -hmm. As you convert over the years, you use these low brackets, you decide what rate you're going to pay. And what's interesting about even looking at this uniform table is that, like, Mark, we've heard from a bunch of people recently and they're like let's say they're 50 years old it's like i got two million dollars in my 401k oh that's a right? problem and that two million is going to be let's say four million by the time they get to age 75 and when you look at that and you see that there is a percentage of the account balance that must come out gang and it starts at four percent ish yeah. every year Based and it starts or- to go up but that's that means you are forced to pull out that money every year and you're due to pay the tax and no you're on matter what. And the government what. plan. It's a- out of your control. Out of your yep. control. And that is a huge differential. So for people who are looking at, obviously they would. Well, they would, I'll, t- I'll tell you some other arguments people have. Okay. Uh, another person, uh, I remember this woman stood up at a seminar and said, you know, I love the idea you're talking about a Roth because mm. I'm big on the Roth. You know, I love tax free. And most people, by the time I finished talking, they love tax free, too. I said, do you want to share your money with Uncle Sam? No. Who wants to share? But she says, I like that. But if I convert, won't that add to my income? Mm-hmm. She said, well, I'm on Medicare. If ah. that adds to my income, won't my Medicare surcharges, they're called IRMA charges, income-related monthly adjustment amount, but it's a separate charge that anybody who's on Medicare knows that when you hit certain brackets, it goes up and it's a cliff. You can go up by $1 and be in a new bracket for parts B and D. So she said, you know, if that increases my Medicare charges, that would make me very angry. Mm. I said, all right, if that would make you angry convert anyway because I'd rather have you be angry one year than be angry for the rest of your life (laughs) because if you don't do it again the problem doesn't go away and when RMDs kick in you're going to have the thing that makes you angry every year for the rest of your life and just to go back to that Medicare income planning the IRMA charge is when you make over a certain amount of money you have a surcharge for your Medicare which it tops out it's not even I mean I should say it's not that much but it isn't terrible it's six grand is the top it's like a real number but, but it bothers people. It makes people nuts. Yeah. And in fact, I was with somebody who retired who said to me, oh, I had to pay an extra $5,000 for my Medicare. That means they make over 500000 I said, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> thanks, thanks, buddy. Like you make a half a million dollars and you're retired. So yeah. calm down. Yeah. So one of the things that becomes important in the questions uh, that we start to field, I think people really do get like, yes, I will do Roth starting now. But they don't, they can't write the check. I remember yes. when Roth first started and I started talking with clients, the hand would shake, you know, I, I have to pay how much you know so how so let's lay out the case it's 2024 now and let's say we have some rich people who are watching and listening and their top bracket is 35 percent they make between let's say about a half a million to 700 grand right and now we're saying you should convert and that pops them up to the whatever they convert they convert at 37 percent okay yeah and they say oh how why why should i do that and what if this is like a problem? Like, what if they repeal the beauty of the Roth? What if I it's, buy into Ed? Oh, that's and, a good one, right? And, and it's not even just a conversion. Like, we get 
questions from people all the time. People in their 30s, 40 years old, they're in that tax bracket. Oh, I don't want to do Roth contributions because my tax bracket's going to go down in the future. You know what? I found, and that's a, uh, there's two questions there, but uh, the first one, for the I get that a lot. I'm already at the top bracket. Shouldn't I be in a lower bracket? I find that people are in the top bracket are always going to be in mm-hmm. the Making top money. bracket. Right. Yep. So maybe it's 37 now. So going back to what I said, the Roth is a bet. The bet is they're going to be at whatever the top bracket is later, and there's more likely it's going to be higher. It's not going to go lower. I just don't see the math of the, being able to lower rates beyond what how low they are now. In fact, rates are scheduled to go up in 26. You only have two years. Uh, that's an interesting question also, but hold on a second. So the the, but I, the other question. Yeah, what, let's get what to that. Congress, so that's another question. I don't get it as nice as Jill just said it or the Mark <laughs> just said it. But I'll get somebody to say, uh, because they remember about Social Security. They never forget. They tax Social Security and they said they They'll do it again. Yeah. Uh, can I trust the government to keep its word that Roth IRAs will always be income tax free? And I always answer the same. Absolutely not. We have a saying among accountants, tax laws are written in pencil. You cannot trust the government. But I will tell you this. I don't think they will ever touch the Roth. Why? Because lucky for us, Congress are the worst financial planners on earth. They're short-sighted, and they see the Roth as a a golden goose. You know, uh, it brings in money. Mm -hmm. They saw that. Their first taste of it was when they needed money back in 2010. Before 2010, if your income exceeded $100,000, you could not convert. In 2010, they needed needed money, and they eliminated that rule. And that's when people like me, I begged people to take that deal. It was a deal of the century. I went all in. I converted everything. I told, uh, and and so they got my money and a lot of other people's money. And I told audiences, and now I remind them. I, ever since then, I reminded them. I said I converted everything. And then I'll even tell a group of CPAs how much did I pay in tax on my conversion? Will, what's your bracket? What's a, zero? Zero. That's what I I told you to take that deal. It was the deal of the century because Congress was desperate for money and they saw the boatloads of money. Now, just to qualify that, the deal was you paid zero in 2010. You paid half in 11 and half Half in 12. 12. But still, the government, which they had never done before, gave everybody an interest-free loan to build a tax-free savings account. Unbelievable. And then you look at, now, I didn't know about the market from 2010 till now, but all of those gains for me are growing. I, I'm not sharing it By with the way, just, I just have to say that that is like almost the most brilliant move because you also get the bottom of the stock market, which was the spring of 2000. Yeah. You convert, you have two years to pay, and all that money is working right, for you. Right. Unbelievable. All right. So Congress saw the money that came in, and they said, well, this raw thing brings in a lot of money. Mm. We could get all our provisions in. Mm. And then they started expanding the Roth 401k and making more available. And then they gave the store away. I wouldn't even say they tipped their hand, but they're using Roth IRAs as revenue raises. So I'm saying they not only beyond tip their hand, they just in your face. If you look at Secure 2.0, it's not on this chart. You'd have to actually look at the whole bill, the mm. actual bill. The All the Roth enhancement provisions, we talked about a little before, Roth SEP IRAs, Roth Simple IRAs, SEP to uh, 529 to Roth IRAs, Roth Contra, Roth catch-up contributions, Roth matching, con- Roth, 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 I called it roth mania They are all under one large font heading, like men walk on moon heading <laughs> in the time. I remember when I was a kid in 1969, that was the largest font they ever put in right. the New York Times. In large font, it's under the title called revenue provisions. That's where they put all oh the Roth. My God. They look at it as revenue. Mm-hmm. So luckily for us, they're short-term thinkers. They get it up front. They only work in 10-year budget cycles, so they kick the can down the road. Uh, so they like the idea of the Roth mm-hmm. because it brings in money up front. The only money that can go into a Roth is already taxed money, right. and they love that. The fact that they're giving away the store on the back end, take advantage of that uh, short sightedness. So they could trim around the edges. Maybe they'll do RMDs or maybe they'll Mm. do it as provisional income if you have this much in a Roth, certain other things. But if they ever cross the line 
and make Roth conversions not as 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 good as they are, they'll kill the golden goose. If they ever do mm. anything that would make people stop converting, they're going to lose all their revenue. Right. So for that reason, I say, again, it's a good bet. First of all, the Roth is here now. So why not take advantage right. of it now? Right. They're not going to make it retroactive and yeah. say like, oh, you have to now. They're not, no, first of all, there's no. Exactly. It's already taxed money. Exactly right. right. So, that, so the only thing that I think is at risk would be if someone's like, mm, we can't let this like people who make a lot of money can't keep using the Roth. We can't let them convert. You know what? And, and there was other signs too that they're going to keep it. The whole thing came out I think a year or two ago with Peter Thiel. He had six billion. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Iron, and they want to create <laughs> all these rules for him. Right. Right, that guy. For, for that guy, because nobody else in the I, that I know of has six billion in their in their Roth IRA. Right, and he did it legitimately. Yeah. His original investment was only seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let's but, talk, yes, but they started other things. They started uh, talking about maybe we should limit who can convert. Maybe we should limit backdoor, you know, Roth convert. But they allowed it all because it brought in money. So that's why I feel the Roth is a, still a good bet. If you want to understand in your situation what is the best approach to managing your retirement assets, give us a holler. Go to JillOnMoney.com, click the Contact Us button. Let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. While you're there, don't forget there are only days before we are going to be joined by Cal Newport for Jill on Money Live. That is our upcoming webinar, and that is on March 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Cal is a wonderful writer. He has really opened my eyes to how we can better work without distraction, with focus. His newest book is called Slow Productivity, The Lost Art of Accomplishment Without Burnout. And I know that I could use a little dose of Cal Newport myself. If you would like to join us, it will cost you $35, but it's not just for Cal. It's Cal's webinar, three more after that, and the entire back catalog from last year, as well as bonus videos. All that for $35. That's what Jill on Money Live will give you. Okay, you can subscribe to this podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. And if you want to watch us, don't forget the YouTube show, Jill on Money, powered by the compound. All the links are right on the website. Please try to put your hands metaphorically or physically on someone's back. Someone needs a little bit of a a boost today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.